For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. No man has a right to send nobody to hell. You don't have that power. Because you don't know the intent of that man's heart. I don't know time's last words. I don't know what the circumstances were. Amen? I don't know your last words or what your circumstances are. But you ought to know it can come in the blinkling and the twinkling of an eye in the night. I hope to see him. But ain't no way in the world I'm going to see my brothers in hell. Amen? Amen. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this word that's about ready to come forth. I thank you and pray for the Hyman family, Lord God. I'm going to miss my brother. I thank you for the time I have with him, for the words that he, of wisdom that he has given not only me and the help that he has given not only to me, but people in this ministry and the people outside this ministry. I thank you that his pain is over, Lord. And I pray that he's in your bosom. In Jesus' name, let the house say amen. 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 All right, let's go to Matthew 11 and continue our lesson. Tonight we're going to be talking about I've skipped over some things, been praying about it. We've been, I've been trying to go through the sheet I gave y'all one by one by one, but God told me to break it up. Tonight we're going to talk about betrayal and a little bit on relationships. Amen? Amen? Because who in here has ever been betrayed? Who in here has ever been a betrayer? Amen? So we know what betrayal feels like, don't we? But we're going to talk about how deep the Bible gets into about betrayal. Because once you can handle betrayal, it's the beginning of your ministry. It's the beginning of your walk with Christ. And I'm going to show you why. Amen? Y'all, well, how does betrayal help you? Because I'm going to tell you right now, maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself. If Judas didn't betray Jesus, none of us in this room who claim to be saved would be saved. It took Judas' act of betrayal in order for everybody in this room to be saved. Amen? So Judas was right in the will of God. Hmm. But we are quick to call somebody a Jews, and we're quick to become a Jews. Amen. 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 So let's start out with our favorite scripture. Let's do a quick little review. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11, our, our golden text for this. Matthew chapter 11. And y'all just keep the hiding of the family in prayer, okay? Amen. Amen. Verse 28, 11, 28, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, quick review, because all good teachers love to review, especially if there's new people coming. <coughs> As you already know, we're doing a rest series, Rational Emotive Spiritual Therapy. We're going to be understanding, actually, I just put betrayal there, but it should be relationships and betrayal. Betrayal, okay? Uh, we also are learning to use the ABCD equation, which is, I should have redid that. Again, I forgot to well, look at that, change it out. But anyway, A equals activating event. Those things, activating event, is things that we cannot prevent. It's called life. Could Tom prevent him from having a seizure and dying in the car? No. <clears throat> These are activating events that we don't have no idea where they're going to come, how they're going to come. But what do we do with B? Our belief about the activating event determines what? C, our emotions or consequential feelings concerning that activating event. Which will do what? D, make us act or do in behavior. And a lot of us in this room, including my brother who left, what did he do? He took his activating event, the hurt that he was feeling from his family, took his belief, even though he was with Jesus, he decided to focus on the negative, that they don't love me anymore, nobody wants me anymore, nobody wants me around anymore. He took that belief greater than the belief that Jesus loves him. Because I've been there too. But I said, you know what? There's somebody who's better a friend than I ever had in my life, his name is Jesus. There's somebody who made love to me better than any woman in my life, his name is Jesus. There's someone who's been there every step of the way with me, and his name is Jesus. So despite what family, friend, children, anybody else say to me, they can't outdo Jesus. Amen. And until you get there, you are not going to react right to the activating event. So he took the activating event and let his emotions take the best of him, which caused him to behave wrong. But if he had taken the activating event, 
that took his belief about Jesus, which I do today, because he's the greatest in my life. Then it changed my emotion to make me say, wow, how great my love. <clears throat> which will what? Make my behavior line up in what? Compassion. Love. Amen? Amen. Compassion and love. Man. And forgiveness. Amen? Then, because why? I learned how to T-E-R, trace, erase, replace. That was a process. You got to find the root of it. Some people don't find the root. All they find is that layer. I was in the garden the other day just yanking up weeds, but I knew I didn't yank up the roots, so I know next week I'm going to come back and cut them again. Because I didn't pull them up from the root. Amen? Then what does it do? It brings an SDT, self-destructive thought. And every time you have an activating event, it's going to bring a self-destructive thought. Some of us wake up looking for that self-destructive thought so that we can act out behavior, go get a blunt, go get a bottle, go get some crap, so I'm going some woman or man because you, what my self-destructive thought this morning is I want to pick up where I left off yesterday. Amen. Amen. I used to do it all the time. As soon as I woke up, the pipe was right there. Even if it was a residue with it, I had to get started, scratching it out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And as soon as I got that first blast, pow, I'm off and running. <laughs> so could not change my behavior, I mean my belief, yeah? Because my behavior said forget everything else. I'm going to go get the next blast. Get it, no matter what it takes. Lying, cheating, stealing, robbing, even my own family. I'm going to get my next hit because my behavior dictated it to me. Amen? But now I learned to what? SRT. Scripture <coughs> replacement thought. I decided I'm going to sit there and learn the word. I sat there and learned the word while reading my Bible and smoking crack. Because what? One of them had to change my life. The crack was either going to kill me or the word was going to make me alive. I decided to let the word make me alive. Smoking and reading. Smoking and reading. Then one day I was just reading. Amen. 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 Don't let nobody tell you what it takes for you to get to God. You know who you are. You know what it takes. And guess who else knows what it takes? Because all people are going to do is frustrate you to get you to act. Amen? Amen? That's all they want to do is get you off. What well, I'm saying, get you off your slam. They know exactly what button to push. There's a term we use in counseling called the enabler. Everybody in this room got an enabler. They call family members. They call daughters. They call sons. They call employees. They call bosses. They enable you. To act out of an activating effect which will change your belief to make you get emotional to go do the wrong behavior. Amen? Amen. So, let's talk about the trick. I want to talk about a guy <coughs> that <laughs> is really fantastic. Because y'all know David been betrayed and Jesus been betrayed. How many of you know this? Well, I know some of y'all are going to get a little heavy tonight. But I hope it, I'm bringing it to you. I want everybody to turn the Bible to Psalms 55. Some of you may have read it before. So we're going to go to Psalms 55. If we got enough time, I'm going to read something out of the book. But again, I got so, so much on my heart tonight, I want y'all to see this straight out the Bible. Amen? Maybe you'll see yourself and change, or maybe you'll recognize somebody who did it to you and realize it was God's tool to mature you. Everything that's negative coming in your life is sent by God to mature you. I got mad with God and I read the scripture where he said, I send me affliction. I'm blaming the devil. What well, the devil did this. And God said, no, read my Psalms 119. I read so many scriptures that said he sent me affliction. I got mad at God. Why are you crazy? What's wrong with you? But it was him. It wasn't the devil. Too mature me. Amen? Amen. Psalms 55. Now watch this. We're going to read the whole chapter just about. Ready? Ready. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, amen, he's speaking in his ear, amen, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me. How many of you ever had sin thrown upon you that you never did? Amen. And in wrath they hate me. Verse 4, my heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearful 
darkness and trembling are come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I have wings like a dove, for then would I just fly away and be at what? Rest. Look, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. That word there is Selah. Now, whenever you see the word Selah in Psalms, it's telling you to take a pause and think about it. It actually was a music note that they will put there for a pause in that particular song. But now when God's telling us Selah, he said, stop right there, think about everything you just read, and then move on. Y'all got that? So when you see that word Selah, don't read on it. Stop reading and say, how is that? Amen. But for, for lessons tonight, you just want to be reading. That's just for you and your own study time. All right? Verse 8. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm of the tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and God. God is another word for deceit too. Deceit and God depart not from her streets. For it was not, now pay attention to this. Watch this, y'all. For it was not an enemy that, what? Reproached me. Then I could have boned it, or otherwise I could have it. <laughs> See, he said, it wasn't an enemy. I could have handled it if it wasn't an enemy. Let's see what he said. Then I could have boned it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did this magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. See? Let's keep reading. But, look at who he's getting ready to stop. But it was that a man, my equal, my guide, mm -hmm. someone who instructed him, and my acquaintance. That means he knew him just like his brother. Mm -hmm. See, this guy who betrayed him wasn't, wasn't somebody to far off. This wasn't an unknown person. This is somebody you walked with, talked with, ate with, party with. Counseled with, taught with. Amen. Amen. Are y'all getting this? Yes, Amen. Amen. Verse 14. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. That means they went to church together all the time. They sat in the sanctuary and praised God. Mm. Woo. Look at y'all. How many of y'all have people like that that love you? Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Come on. Now, watch this, verse 15. Let death seize upon them. Now, he's asking his best friend and his other one to be killed. See, I didn't reveal who they are yet. We get ready to. He said, let, let, let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into where? Hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and let them, even at noon, I'm going to pray to you, God, in the morning, in the evening, even at noon. I'm going to lift some prayers up to you. Amen. I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He shall deliver my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that is by the fulfilled Selah. Because they have no changes. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Amen. When a man refused to change, he's telling God, I don't fear you. What do we read in 1 Corinthians? When you don't change and God knows your heart still loves you, he ought to kill you and bring you home so the devil won't receive your soul. Amen. Amen. Well, boy, I can hear a pin drop up in the end. And sometimes that death is caused so you can wake up and live, people. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with them. He has broken his what? Covenant. This man broke his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. That means he was just speaking against his friend. Big time. Amen. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring.
bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their day. But I will trust in thee. I will trust in thee. Now, I'm going to tell you about this guy. Everybody go to 2 Samuel chapter 15. 2 Samuel chapter 15. I know y'all not used to go to Old Testament a lot, but I got to bring this guy out. The man's name was Ahimophel. How many of you ever heard that name before? His name was Ahimophel, and it means uh, the son of foolishness or the son of father. But watch this. Ahimophel was Bathsheba's grandfather. Anybody know who Bathsheba was? That's why David wrote Psalms 51, because he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Now, Bathsheba was married to Uriah the Hittite. David come on the roof, he attempted to see her naked, take the bath, say, I want her. So he's having sex with her. All of a sudden, she gets pregnant. This Hittite, Uriah, is out there at war. He brings her home and says, go sleep with your wife. To make it phony as if it was his baby. Thank God we got DNA today, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the Hittite, Uriah, switched over to Jerusalem, I mean, to Judaism and said, you know what? My brother's out there war. Why should I be able to come home from a war and have this joy with my wife? I'm not going to sleep with him. Now David's all messed up. Because now he had to lie, and one lie had to build on another lie. Anytime you lie, you got to build on another. So what does he do? He write a letter. Sends him back to his brothers in war. I'm sure they're not the story as much as I can. Gave him a letter, sealed letters, very important. Gave it to the man and said, you want to go back to war. And when he gave it to his general, his general opened the seal and said, put this boy on the front line and have him killed. That's how David committed murder. So the man carried his own death letter to the front line. And he was killed. Now, a Himmelfell loved you, right? He was happy he was married to his granddaughter. But him and David were best friends. So when Uriah found out, I mean, when Ahimophel found out that David did this thing to Uriah, he began to conspire against David with his son Absalom. How I many of you know that name? Absalom was one of his sons. Amen? Yeah. So he began to uh, conspire. That's why David said, it was a man that I went to church with. It was a man that I was fully acquainted with. It was a man that I took full counsel with. You know why? Because the scripture says, and we're going to see it in a minute, that when Ahimophel gave counsel from God, it was as if God was speaking. That's how powerful he was. And that's how wide he was. Anytime he opened his mouth, all of Israel and all the kings heard him and said, that's God. So he put fear in David. Amen? Let's go to 2 Samuel 15. And let's look at... Uh, 2 Samuel 15. I want to get there before I give out the verse to myself. 2 Samuel 15, verse 12. What does it say? And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gileadite, David's what? Counselor for his city, even from Gilead, while he was offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. You know why they, this conspiracy was strong? Because now he had David's counselor with him. David's best friend. So what did Absalom do? He conspired with the person that was betraying or betraying uh, David. So now, not only did David's best friend betray him, now his own blood betrayed him. Amen. Go to verse 31 of the same chapter. Look at that. And one told David, saying, Ahimophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, Oh Lord, oh Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahimophel into foolishness. Remember I said his words were so powerful? Now David's praying, please don't let him be right in anything he says. Turn his counsel. But see, I can see why David prayed this, because first I didn't understand why David can do this. After he committed murder and adultery. And God so said he was a man after his own heart. But the reason why David can get the counsel of God and pray to God that way, because he repented. Amen? Until you repent, you can't get the ear of God. I'm trying to tell you to repent. Repent. And no matter what you do, you will get the ear of God. But God still has to send you through this. Why? Because we want to see what happens now. Go to chapter 16 of 2 Samuel. 